I stared silently at the woman who was glaring at me. I don't know the details of what happened in her and her husband's past, and I don't think I need to know. From her point of view, I may be someone she hates, but my husband's wife is me, and I have nothing to be ashamed of. My name is Natalia. I'm 33 years old, and I am a freelance interior decorator. I used to work for a company but switched to freelance when I got married two years ago. My husband is one year older than me and his name is Hunter. I met my husband through an acquaintance. He has just broken up with his girlfriend of a long time just before we started dating and was feeling down. A friend of mine was worried about my husband and asked my friend, Is there anyone you think would be a good match for him? At the time, I was not interested in love or marriage at all, but according to my friend, that was a good thing. It's insensitive to immediately introduce someone new to someone who's just had their heart broken, but it's true that meeting someone new is a refreshing change of pace. Apparently, I was just right for him. My first impression of the newly heartbroken hunter was that he is a gloomy person. No matter how much I talked to him, he never responded softly or smiled, and I thought I would never see him again. However, a friend later contacted me to tell me that he wanted to see me again. I was surprised, but he was not a bad person, so we agreed to meet again. We went out to dinner with friends for a few months after that. Each time we met, he became more cheerful and started to laugh a lot. When we first met, I had heard that he had just had his heart broken, so seeing him lighten up more and more made me think that he was an adult in his own right. I began to look forward to seeing Hunter more and more, and we started going out together. After six months of knowing each other, Hunter asked me to go out with him on the premise of marriage. I was very surprised, but I had feelings for him. So I accepted his confession and we started dating. A year later, we were married. I was very nervous when I went to meet his parents. Hunter had told me that his mother was a former teacher and a very strict person. Unexpectedly, however, she welcomed me with open arms from the moment we met and we had a good relationship after marriage. Gradually, however, I began to feel something strange. Natalia, you are very put together. Your parents must have educated you very well. I see that you graduated from an excellent university, and I'm so glad that you're going to become a part of our family. Don't say it like that, Mom. I'm just complimenting her. There's no need to get angry. Every time I saw my mother-in-law, she would compliment me highly. I found some of her language a bit annoying, but she didn't seem to sound mean, so I just let it slide. What bothered me was my husband's attitude. He would get grumpy when my mother-in-law started complimenting me. At first, I thought he was just being considerate of me, but after a few times of this happening, I began to wonder if that was not the case. Around that time, I had a chance to meet a friend who was the reason I met my husband, and I told her about it. My friend was reluctant to tell me, but she told me a fact that I did not know. She told me that the girl Hunter dated before meeting me broke up with him because Hunter's mother disapproved of their marriage. When I heard this, I was a little shocked because I felt as if my husband had unfinished business with his ex-girlfriend. But at the same time, I felt refreshed when I realized why my husband was behaving that way toward my mother-in-law. To be honest, I was a little bothered, but my husband is kind and we have a good relationship. I changed my mind and decided not to worry too much about my husband's past. Things were peaceful for a while after that, but after a few months, my husband started acting strangely. We had talked about wanting to have children as soon as possible since the beginning of our marriage, but then my husband suddenly started to act strangely. We can wait a little before we have kids. There's no need to rush, he suddenly said. Why? I thought you wanted kids as soon as possible. 
I want to enjoy my life with you, just you, for a little longer. I felt uncomfortable with my husband's response. My husband was very busy with work these days, and we rarely had any alone time together. I thought that he must have some problems. I decided to wait for him to tell me what was bothering him. However, my relationship with my husband began to sour, and my mother in law, who had never bothered me before, began to ask me Are the grandchildren here yet? Perhaps it was because we had been married for two years and there was no sign of pregnancy. But recently, my mother in law was contacting me every day about having a child. It was at this time that my husband said, We are not ready for children. I continued to stress, but one day I ran out of patience. Natalia, are you pregnant yet? Please let me hold my grandchild as soon as possible. I can't handle the child on my own, so from now on, please ask Hunter about children. Huh? She seemed surprised because I had never talked back to her before. I couldn't hold back any longer, so I decided to say everything I wanted to say. You always ask me about having kids, but why don't you say anything to your own son? Isn't that strange? What are you talking about? Isn't it the duty of a wife to bear children? I can give birth alone, but I can't get pregnant just by myself. And if the wife's duty is to bear the child, then what is your son's duty? Is Hunter fulfilling his duties as a son? My mother in law did not answer any of my questions. Recently, I was forced to deal with my mother in law by myself because Hunter was clearly avoiding me. The only time I had a good relationship with my mother in law was when we were first married. I was fed up with my mother in law becoming more and more over involved, and I asked my husband for help, but he did nothing. If my husband is unreliable, I have to do something by myself. We are not having children so that you can hold your grandchildren. We are having children because we want them. So we will decide about having kids ourselves. So please don't interfere. If you must interfere, please talk to Hunter, not me. How dare you talk to your mother in law like that? I thought you were a well bred girl, but you deceived me. I didn't mean to deceive you. I didn't know you were such an over involved and insane person, so I guess the deceit is mutual. I said what I wanted to say, and I unilaterally hung up the phone. I felt refreshed, but my husband came home from work and ruined my mood. Hey, why did you talk back to my mom? Huh? Why are you saying that all of a sudden? My mom called me after work and lectured me for an hour. My husband came home in a bad mood and questioned me as soon as he got home. I showed my husband the many messages from my mother in law urging me to have children. My husband was surprised to see that they were more numerous than he had imagined. I had been holding out for a long time, but I couldn't do it anymore. Also, why is it my fault that your mother scolded you? You've been getting along fine until now, haven't you? I beg you, please continue to make it work. What's the point of choosing me then? I thought it was a mean question, even to myself. As expected, my husband turned pale and upset. Hey, what are you talking about? Did someone tell you something? Who knows? I left my husband, who still wanted to say something, and went to my workroom. A few hours later, when I went to the living room, my husband was there and spoke to me. I'm sorry about earlier. I'll talk to my mom tomorrow. Okay, I'm sorry too. The next day, Saturday, my husband went out to talk to my mother in law. He was dressed very nicely, so I asked him what was going on, and he told me that they were going to a buffet at a hotel that my mother in law wanted to go to. About an hour after my husband left, the doorbell rang repeatedly. When I answered the door to see who it was, it was my mother in law, who was supposed to be at the hotel buffet with my husband. Confused, I let my mother in law in. Where's Hunter? Where is he? He's out for a bit. I'll call him. 
I hurriedly called my husband in his room. After a long ring, he finally answered, "Where are you?" What? As I told you this morning, I'm having dinner with my mom at a hotel. I see. All right. I hung up the phone without saying anything to my husband. I have been feeling lately that my husband might be having an affair. The increased work on holidays, the reluctance on children, the recent awkwardness, and so on. Considering these causes, it seemed fitting that my husband was having an affair, and I had an idea who it was. If my guess is right, then he is making a fool of me. As I was pondering what I should do, my numb mother-in-law took the liberty of entering my room. Hey, what happened to Hunter? Hunter just told me that he's having dinner with you at a hotel right now. That's strange, since you're standing right in front of me right now. I smiled, and my mother-in-law turned pale. Then she pulls out her phone and does something with it. As I was looking at her, wondering what she was doing. Suddenly, my mother-in-law grabbed my arm and screamed, "That boy is really at the hotel. We have to hurry." Huh? Apparently, my mother-in-law has secretly put a GPS app on my husband's phone. I have heard of married couples and lovers doing this, but I have never heard of a mother putting a tracker on her son's phone. I was absolutely mortified by my mother-in-law's unbelievable behavior, but. She didn't care about me. She called a cab and pushed me into it. Of course, my mother-in-law was with me. In the cab, my mother-in-law said, "My son is being deceived. The only person he loves is you. Please, don't ever divorce him." She keeps saying selfish things. As I listened to her, I realized that my mother-in-law also thought that my husband was having an affair. And that she had an idea who it was. When we arrived at the hotel, my mother-in-law ran out of the taxi without paying. My mother-in-law was at the front desk of the hotel and said, "I know that he's here. Bring my son out here this instant." She demanded to the employee. I rushed to stop her, but she would not listen to me. The people around me were also looking at me, saying, "What's the fuss?" I was so embarrassed that I wanted to run away. Huh, mom? Hunter. I heard my husband calling for my mother-in-law, and when I turned around, I saw my husband standing there with a beautiful woman. The woman had her body snuggled up to my husband, and her arms were intertwined with his. So there was no doubt that the woman was my husband's lover. I should have known. But I was shocked to learn that my husband was really having an affair. Unlike me, who was standing there unable to move, my mother-in-law jumped on the woman next to my husband. You thieving cat! I can't believe you and Hunter hadn't separated yet. You're hurting me. Please let me go. Mom, what are you doing? The scene instantly turned into chaos. My husband tried desperately to stop my mother-in-law, but she was so angry that she could not stop and ended up getting into trouble with the hotel security. Still, my mother-in-law's anger did not abate, and we decided to discuss the situation in the room my husband had reserved for us. When I glanced at him, my husband awkwardly averted his gaze. In a room with just the four of us. It was my mother-in-law who opened her mouth first. Explain yourself. Why haven't you broken up with this girl? That's none of your business. Of course, it's my business. It's true that you became calm when you see someone more angry than yourself. I found out that my husband was having an affair, and I was surprisingly calm, even though he and his lover were right in front of me. You will explain it to me then, won't you? I am your wife. I, I'm sorry. I don't want you to apologize. I'm asking you to explain. My husband was hesitant, wondering if I was calm, or on the contrary, if I was scared. He couldn't stand the pressure from me and started to talk. 
The woman who was with my husband was his ex girlfriend whom he had dated before he met me. Although they had broken up once, my husband had been thinking about her for a long time and contacted her a few months ago. They had an affair right away and have been having an affair ever since. She glared at me while my husband was explaining. A woman who married her boyfriend right after they broke up because his parents were against the marriage. From her point of view, I may be the bad guy. So you're going to divorce me and be with her then? Wait a minute. I don't want to divorce you, Natalia. What? What is this man saying at this stage? It seems I am not the only one who thought so, and after being silent for a long time, his lover opened her mouth. Wait a minute. I thought you were going to divorce this woman and marry me. I'm sorry, Raylan. I didn't mean it. Huh? Did you deceive me again? My husband, who has no intention of marrying this woman, and the woman who insists that he deceived her. And my mother in law, who doesn't approve of a divorce. I sadly watch them all argue. I'm going to divorce my husband. I'm not going to listen to my mother in law. And I'm going to demand alimony from the adulterer. I have been watching the situation for a while while thinking about what to do now, but there is no sign that things are going to get better. I'm wasting my time if things continue like this. Please calm down. When I raised my voice, the three looked at me. You guys can keep arguing, but I'm going home. What? Then I'll go home too. There's no way I'm going home with you. We're getting a divorce. I couldn't help but laugh. I couldn't help but wonder about my husband who thought he could return with me under these circumstances. But it seems that my husband really intended to go home with me. I'm sorry, but please. Don't divorce me. I felt guilty because I was happy being married to you, and I thought I was the only one who was happy. I contacted Raylan to make sure she was happy. I know it was just a whim that led me to having an affair, but the only person I love is Natalia. What the hell? You said you couldn't get over me, Hunter. You shut up. Besides, even if I were to get a divorce, I can't marry you since my mom is against it. After hearing my selfish husband's arguments, I could see that his girlfriend didn't love him anymore. I too do not love him. Even my mother in law looked at my husband with a bit of contempt. You are the one who should shut up. Why do you think there is any other option but divorce in this situation? Don't be silly. Don't say that. I know. You said you want kids as soon as possible. I can make that happen. If we get divorced, you'll have to start looking for someone else. Stop it. You're disgusting. I slapped away my husband's outstretched hand with all my might, and he looked shocked. But seeing his face left me with no feelings of pity or why I should show him mercy. I'll go through a lawyer for alimony and other things. Of course, I'm going to ask for alimony from that woman too, so be prepared. Huh? Why should I pay alimony? If you have an affair with a married man, you have to pay alimony. If you don't agree, why don't you hire a lawyer too? It'll be a waste of money though. Then I left the scene. The ex girlfriend with whom my husband was having an affair with was dating my husband from the age of 23 to 30. I felt a little sympathy for her because they had been together for a long time, but my mother in law opposed their marriage and broke it off. So I thought that after the divorce from my husband was finalized, she could remarry or do whatever she wanted. However, when I was discussing my divorce with my husband, a shocking revelation came to me. To my surprise, the adulterous partner had a fiance. The fiance found out about the affair and broke off the engagement, but my husband did not know about it until the fiance asked for alimony. At first, out of guilt, my husband was willing to shoulder the alimony that I had charged his lover. However, when my husband found out that she was engaged, he refused to help her. In the end, after much wrangling, it was settled that each of them would pay the alimony claimed against them. 
and finally our divorce was finalized. My ex-husband did not want to get divorced until the very end. He finally gave up when the friend who introduced me to him got angry with him and said, that's enough. After the divorce, my ex-husband had a very hard time. On that day, a colleague from my husband's company was at the hotel buffet with his family, and he heard my mother-in-law call my husband's lover a thieving cat. The colleague misunderstood the situation due to my mother-in-law's actions. Hunter is married, but rumors started that he was a lousy man who was having an affair with two women, an older and a young woman. My husband denied it and said that the older woman was his mother, but the fact still remained that he was having an affair. He just changed from a two-timing cheater to a mommy's boy, but the fact that he was a lousy man did not change. In the end, my husband resigned voluntarily because he found it difficult to stay at the company, and now he is working part-time. My mother-in-law told my ex-husband to come back to her house after he became unemployed, after paying me alimony, but he refused. My ex-husband spent all his savings to pay alimony to me. He is now living in an old apartment. His lover was supposed to leave her fiancé and remarry my ex-husband, but they ended up breaking up. Since she quit her full-time job because she was planning to get married, she is now working several part-time jobs while she is busy paying alimony. I, on the other hand, was hurt in many ways, but I decided that it was a good lesson for me. It's been three years since I became a freelancer, and my work is getting busier. So, I'm going to stick to my job for a while.